trainer, educator, I run educational processes for social and political leaders. One of the tools that we use is uh, for sure is facilitation uh, and we try to learn people how to be a good facilitator in their processes. And so why, why facilitation is necessary when you think about building innovative culture of, uh, in your organization, your team? So I think it's the biggest worth of it is that you can um, have external perspective. That each time when you have to uh, explain what is, what is important for you, what, uh, what are you talking about to someone external who doesn't have to understand everything clearly, is always uh, fruitful because to really find the essence and name it. So this is the first uh, advantage of uh, facilitation. And when I was thinking about when facilitation is, uh, is adequate when you work and you find it when you are looking for some answers, so I think about three situations. First one, where an external facilitator is, is good to take him or her, is when you uh, work on some very complicated issue, when the topic you deal with is really uh, multi-layers, multi -layer when there's a different perspective that you have to take into account, while you don't have to have your own access to it, so external questions, external uh, person would really help to define it better, to look from wider perspective, to look from different angles of it. So it is the first uh, first reason why it is good to really be forced to look at your topic or problem from having different shoes on your feet. Uh, so this is first one. The second is one I think when you work in your team, when you deal with some um, challenge, is when you have to take care of people. That I think that why team is working on a challenge, challenge or on its challenges, sometimes people can be lost. And the goal, the topic, the really uh, result that you are interested on is can become more important than people. And I think the external facilitator, facilitator for the team Oh, just will be uh, adequate to take care of people when you there is a risk or already exists some conflict uh, when people can be too harsh for itself or for themselves in a the team when people are has this tendency to uh, say a little bit too much or not in that way that you you would like to, to be touched so when people can be touched or are already touched so just to really make some space to understand each other, to, to communicate your emotions as well. So it, it is for me a parallel element of working on, on meritocracy side, so on the content and with really good communication and place for emotions. But the third one is when you, um, when you are stuck in finding answers, where there is, when you work on some concept and and uh, you really don't know how to move forward and somebody who would uh, just help the team with some tools that with some really uh, methods that team doesn't have to have the knowledge how to use so really really methods and tools but this is something that facilitator should give so it would really have to uh, leave this moment of really blockage uh, blockade and move forward with a uh, new input. So this is the first one. I think that uh, facilitator is really helpful when you have to think out of the box, when you um, you know that you don't have this, those answers in yourself, in your team, and you really have to um, be moved in your thinking to some other areas. And the facilitator could give that. So these are for me the, the best moments and the question why, when and why a facilitator is a good support for, for innovative culture in your team. There can emerge some uh, aspects of the problem, of the topic, of the, of the issue that you weren't aware of before, that there might be the really satisfaction of the team which is important. So when you work on, on some strategy, how to build innovation, how to develop it, and it can be so tiring that your team at the end will say, oh, we don't know, we don't want to work anymore on it. And really energetic and supportive facilitator can really 
take care of the quality of the process and the people inside. That in the beginning and the end, when you have your outcomes, uh, you still have also the readiness of people to, uh, to work on it. How to find them? I think that you have to look around yourself, your organization, your team, but not too far. I mean that the facilitator should be a person who uh, is external for sure. So here comes all the element that there is no conflict of interest, there is no personal interest in uh, working with this topic. But on the other hand, there must be understanding that the, the facilitator knows what are we talking about. And I think he or she should be more, uh, he should be somehow cu curious about yeah, th there should be a personal interest, I mean interest not in the sense that I will gain something, but rather in being interested in the topic. So, person who is not too far, but uh, not too close as well, uh, knowing the, the topic and being interested in it. And uh, the fourth element is that it must be someone who will be trust for each member of the team. So. Whenever there are some personal uh, connections, some history maybe behind, you really have to be aware of that and ask both sides, I mean the, the participants of the meeting or participants of the process and the external facilitator showing really the list of participants uh, who will be present to really make, take care that there will be no a strange atmosphere while people meet, oh, sorry, I cannot work here. So really, t the, the person must be trust and understanding uh, in, in all relations, also facilitator versus team, but also within the team. Uh, and so I think that it should be a person who is, um, who is a, a aware of what you are dealing with. So it's some, somebody who is uh, supportive in a way that really he believes in your work, in your um, goals, but not uh, personally involved.